Hello friends, and welcome to a lesson on doing addition on the large bead frame. I'm going to get that bead frame set up, and normally this bead frame is going to stand, of course, but to make things easy for you to see, I've put it on this table with a nice white background. Uh, before we begin, make sure you have some bead frame paper so that you can uh, do your problems and you're welcome to follow along with me as well. Uh, let's just remember our categories, our units, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and then down here is the millions which you can't see right at the moment. Now uh, remember exchanging as well, once we get to ten on any wire, we have to exchange to the next. So there's the 10. I'm going to exchange this 10 units for this 10 bead. It's pretty awesome. Well, I've actually set up an addition problem already on my sheet, and there it is. 4,720 plus 2,153. Imagine if you had that kind of money in your pocket right now. Those are some pretty big numbers. To get addition set up, we're going to actually put that top number on the bead frame. My first digit's zero. I actually already did that. Next, I need two tens or 20. And then I need seven hundreds or seven hundred and four thousand or four thousand. Now, this example is uh, an example of static addition. There's not going to be any exchanging in this problem. So it shouldn't be too difficult. But after this example, we will go through an example of dynamic addition when there will be exchanging. So let's try this out. I can see on my units wire that I need to add three beads. Well, one, two, three. It's three. I'm going to write it down. On my next one, on the tens wire, I have to add five beads. So one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. And I will write down seven. On my hundreds wire, I have to add one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And on my last wire for this problem, the thousands, I've got to add two, one and two, and that makes one, two, three, four, five, and six, and I'm going to write it down. And I am done with my first problem, actually. 6,873. That's quite a big number. Imagine if you had that many oranges in your pantry. I'm going to shade in my next line so I can start a brand new problem. As I said, this example is going to be dynamic. So I need to mix some numbers in here that are going to add up to more than 10. So I'm just going to start loading some big numbers up at the top. What is that? A 3? Oh my goodness. Let's cap it off with a 9. I put my addition symbol on the left side, and then I'm going to put numbers like 6, maybe 4. Maybe this one I'll leave alone. It'll be just a two. And then uh, for my last one, how about a three? I'm also going to make sure to darken the line underneath. I'm pretty good at that. But you know, I could have also taken a straight edge and it would have been perfect. But there's always a chance to try again. And you've got an eraser just in case you need it. So. 9,387. I'm going to blank out my bead frame. Easy as tilting. And now I've got to set up 9,387. So here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 tens or 80. 1, 2, 3 hundreds. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9,000. Let's begin. Uh, it says I have to add 6. I don't have six. I only have three. Now there's two ways that you can do this. It depends on maybe how strong your memory and your math facts are, but let's try it the really easy way first. I need six, so I'll count one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now you can see that again. Um, let me put that seven back on there. One, 
two, three, gotta exchange, three, four, five, six. Whew. Did you see I added one to this next wire? It's going to come in useful later. But let's take that number down for now. That number is a three. Now what it actually equaled was 13. That's why we put that extra 10 here. But we're not really going to think about it like that just yet because, um, well, something else might change here too. And also notice that we don't have eight here anymore. We have nine. That one we added as part of the exchange doesn't count. We just keep adding on top of what's there. And it says we've got to add four. At this time, I'm going to use the other method. I'm going to think, well, I only have one there. I need four. Well, that means I need three more. So let me go ahead and add that exchange. And I'm just going to leave three over on the side there. How fantastic. Another three. I'm going to add that to my paper. I've got to add two to this one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Fantastic. And my last wire is the thousands. I have to add three. And again, I don't have that there. I'm going to do it both methods for you. One, two, three. And the reason I hang on to that number as long as I can is just in case my memory is not as good, I can remember what that last number is. And then I can also show you what it would look like when I uh, do it the other way. Oh, I need two more. Boop. And I almost forgot to exchange there. And now I'm going to write down that number, that two. I'm also going to write down, I made it to the ten thousands. And I actually slant my ones when I write them so that they don't blend in with the line, but you can see the answer is 12,633. Imagine if you had 9,387 donuts and someone gave you 3,246 more donuts. Then you'd have 12,633 donuts. That's a lot of donuts. Can I have a couple? Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on bead frame addition. Now, I only went up to the thousands, but this does go up to the millions. So please feel free to try as far as you can go. And this paper even gives you the option to add that 10 million if you go over. Well, friends, have fun with your dynamic and static addition exploration on the large bead frame.